What's up guys? In this video, my goal is to, sh to show you how to have the user or the admin user click on this button here because right now we are, if we edit, we click the edit button, we land on this page here, which is going to end up being the admin, uh, the, the page to edit the product. As you can see, it's a blank canvas or a page. But here in the URL, if you look, we have a unique ID. And this unique ID is specific to the product. And we are going to make use of that. So in this video, I'm going to use this ID here. And I'm going to use read. I'm going to create an action function called get product with Redux to make an Axios request to the backend and retrieve that product. And then when we're going to use that action function within a use effect inside this admin edit product component. And so once the component mounts, we should have act. Oh, by that time we should have a product. Uh, available to us in the reabduct state and at that point we are going to store that product from the redux state into the component state okay uh, I know that's probably an earful but it'll make sense as we go along okay but um, we'll work on it piece by piece all right so let's get started with this so first step what I'm gonna do is to set up component state for the products okay so here in the admin edit product, uh, ad admin edit product component, right underneath here, I'm going to start creating our component state. So the first thing is, uh, let's see here. Actually, I'm going to, because I have to refresh my memory here. Uh, let me open admin edit product mode to recall what are the things we need. Okay, so I'm going to need a property for product image. Okay, so oh, let's go back here. Ooh, changes. Okay, so here we go. All right, so product image, and then the method that's going to set it. Um, uh, set product image. Use state. Yeah, I'm going to have to import that. Okay, we're going to set it to null initially. All right, so we'll, let's go ahead and import that use state from React just like this. All right, so I'm going to copy this here, paste it. Uh, let's see how many times. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to paste it five more times. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so I should have a total of six. All right, so the next one is product name and the product description all right so here product name set product name this is going to be an empty string and then next one product description set product description okay what were the other ones price and category so product price, set product price, product category, set product category. And then the last one was product quantity. Quantity uh, product quantity or oh, you have to change these to an empty string not null the only one that's null is for the product image everything else is an empty string all right so we got that taken care of so let me go here set up component state for products all right next step create redux constant reducer and action for get product okay so we're going to start off with the constant here in the redux let's go constant open up the product constant and right underneath i'm going to copy this here for the get products and paste it below and just change this to singular which is just get product all right that's all we need for the constant i'm going to save that 
I'm gonna close that to make space. And then the next step was the reducer. So if I go to our reducers right here and do product reducers, similar to the last action we did, I'm gonna copy this case for the get products and paste it below. And I'm just gonna change this to a singular get product. And for this is product and this is not, we're not gonna return an array. We're just gonna return the action payload just like this. Oh, and another thing is we need to obviously import that constant. So get product, save that. And finally, our product actions. So here in the actions folder, click on your product actions. And let's look for the get products here. Oh, but before we forget, let's go ahead and do the same thing. Import the get product constant just like that all right and then we are also want to copy this get products and make some adjustments adjustments so here i'm going to change this from get products to get product and as an argument we're going to have to pass the product id okay that stays the same let's see start loading stays the same axios get it's going to be a get request and we are going to make some back ticks because we are use some javascript so change that to back ticks and then so it's going to be api product and then the product id just like this okay and then it's going to stop loading and then at that point at the end when dispatch get product and get product, we're gonna get do response data and then response data, just like that. We're gonna, as a payload, we're gonna pass response data. Okay, if I save that, that should take care of our Redux. So if I go here, create the constant reducer and action for get product. Perfect, all right. Mark that off, next step. Dispatch get product with the product ID within the use effect. Okay, so that is, we are, let me close this side panel up, make some room. All right, so here in our admin product, no, not, actually I can close this. This was, yeah, I don't think I need this anymore. This was the product model I was just using as a referral. Okay, so what I need to do is, um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna close the product reducer and the product action i make some space so here in the admin edit product component let's continue so what i want to do is as a send in the note so dispatch this get product is within a use effect okay so we're going to import use effect okay so we can use a use effect to execute as soon as a component mounts okay so Right below here, right below the product ID, do, well, actually, you know what? I take that back. Actually, let me do that right below the component state property. All right, use effect. And then we know that this takes in two arguments. So for first one, oh, I am going to call dispatch. All right, dispatch, we need to uh, dispatch an action function you for Redux. So I'm gonna import dispatch from React Redux. Okay, so now I can use dispatch. Um, let's see here. Um, let me go back, I'm gonna use, um, let me see make this more nicely f legible uh let, where's my components okay components all right this is just a little it's not necessary but for me i just want to do it this way all right so i'm going to take this here uh let's see um yeah i'm just going to place this here okay and then i'm going to call this it's going to be called uh Param, uh, params, uh, yeah, param, 
parameters, parameters, params, just params. All right, and then uh, do another one for the components. That I'm going to call it uh, com component state property properties. And then right here, I'll call this um, life 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 cycle method methods. And then right here, the portion where we actually render our stuff, our JSX. So uh, just call it render render just render render okay all right that was not necessary but for me i wanted to do it just to me it just makes things uh more verbal or makes things look nicer all right so anyways that's taken care of uh where we at so we were here so to use product okay so to use effect right so here we are so now i can call dispatch but in order to use our redux method we have to oh uh, actually yeah, actually, this is part of Redux, so I'm gonna call it right here. I'm gonna call Redux Global State Properties. And just because this is part of Redux, I'm gonna call it here. So what I'm gonna do is constant, const, and call dispatch over here. Use dispatch just like this. All right and let's see all right so right here i'm going to call dispatch on our method but we have to import our method so let's go ahead and import that let's import from go back one directory go into redux go into actions and then it was in product actions and what am i referring to the get product action Okay, so now right here, I can dispatch and call get product. And remember, this takes in an argument, and we have this product ID, right? Product ID that we're extracting from the URL via this right here. So pass that here, and there we go. And of course, for the second argument of use effect, we have our our array or uh, square empty square braces um, and we add our dependencies here I'm gonna add here our dispatch and product ID just like so okay so we took care of that all right yeah all right cool so next step is dispatch get product within use effect okay we took care of that next step create the backend route for router get product id okay so now let's start making our way into the backend okay so when we make this it's going to dispatch get product id and let me refresh your memory here in the redux the actions the get product is this thing right here, right? And as you can see, it's making our HTTP request to the backend. It's an H it's a to a, a API product, and then we pass the product ID, right? All right. So that's where that's coming from. So get product. All right. So now let's move to the backend. And server JS is the entry point. As you can see, we have this is the entry the starting entry point. Uh, checking for this this beginning portion of the, the 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 request that's made so that would mean that we have to check that route inside this product routes so let's go ahead and open that file let's go to routes on the back end right here and as you can see we have already some other routes related to the product uh, what I'm gonna do is copy this here the get request this was for the uh, for the read all reading all the products that we did earlier. Okay, this is going to be similar except we are 
getting a parameter passed here, which was the product ID. So we do colon and then pass the product ID. And for the controller, we are just gonna call it read. Okay, so read just singular, meaning we're just gonna read one product, okay? This one was to retrieve all the products, all right? All right, so we took care of that now. So that's for the routes. So create back in route for this right here, good. So let's go ahead and mark that off. And generally, after you create your backend route, you want to start working on your controller. So here I have my, I'm going to set up a backend controller to test the product, that product ID is arriving to the backend. So let's go ahead. Yeah, here's the controllers and then product. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this read all controller. I'm going to copy and then paste below and then change this to just read and let's see I'm gonna delete everything inside this try block and just and I'm gonna check to test to see that we are that the product D from the front end is arriving to the back end okay if everything goes well it should be stored here in the request object so let's go ahead and test that so i'm going to do product product id equals request params and then product id okay why am i calling it product id here because it has to be the same as what we call it here in the routes here right after the colon here so if you gave this a different name maybe you did just colon id that's okay, you can do that, but just make sure that over, okay, yeah, over here that you do, I call it ID as well, okay? So that's that, so now let's go ahead and console. What I wanna do is console the product ID, all right? This is gonna be our test to see that so far we're doing okay. And let's see, in the catch block, I'm gonna just change this, change this to read, error, okay, everything else stays the same. All right, so let's go ahead and test this thing out. Okay. All right, so here we are. Okay, so let me go to the dashboard. And if I click edit for turkey burger, okay. So the product so the, on the back end console, it should match this same ID here. So we got 1382. If we go to the console on the back end and look at that, 1382 in our backend server console. So, so far so good. Okay, where are we at? All right, so we were right here. So we tested that out, that the product ID is arriving to our backend. All right, so the next step is to finish the backend controller. Okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and finish this thing up. I'm gonna delete this console and continue over here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to create a variable called product, and I'm gonna call the product modal model. Oh, actually it's gonna be await, because remember this is gonna be an asynchronous request. So await product find by ID. Okay, we can use this mongoose method because uh, we're f using the ID that's coming from the front end. So, and then we just pass the product ID, just like so. All right, so now, um, you know, as a second check, let me just do, just make sure that we are getting a product. All right, console log the product here. I'm gonna save that. Okay, so now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the dashboard and if I click edit and go to the console, let's see. Look at that. You see, we get the object with the product ID, okay? As you can see, the product name here is the turkey burger. Good, so we are getting the object. All right, so that's good. All we have to do now is we can send this out to back to the front end. And that is it. That's our controller, very simple, um, very short. Let's go ahead and um, 
Okay, so finish back in controller. There we go. The structure product, the structure product from Redux state. The structure product, the structure product from Redux. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna go back to our admin edit component. Let me minimize this here. And what we're going to do is we're going to we can use use selector from react redux library to retrieve state properties from the redux global state so we can make use of that we can pull that out from over here use selector okay and over here i'm going to call const Cons, and I'm going to use the structure the product from and refresh your memory what am I talking about this product this product I'm referring to the, the as part of the uh, the the products global state is coming from uh, let's see if I go to the redux redux reducer uh, the product reducer over here Remember for the get re for the get product here, I have this property called product. All right, so this is what I'm trying to destructure. Okay, this right here because that's going to store our action payload that's coming from the back end. Okay, so let me go back here. So I'm destructuring the product, and I'm going to call use selector and state. And we'll do state dot products just like so. All right, so now we have product that we're trying to retrieve destruction from the Redux global state. So destruction product from Redux state. All right, so next step is set condition and use effect. Here, let me close the side panel. Okay. So here we have set condition and use effect to first check if product exists. If not, call get product action. Okay, so let's just start off with that first piece. With that first piece. So as I said, it's going to be instead of use effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out here, make some adjustments, and below I'm going to do if not product. Now, when I'm talking about this product, I'm referring to this right here, that uh, that's coming from the Redux state. We're checking if there's any if 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 it has a value. So if not that, then that means we need to call this dispatch of the get product, just like so. Okay. If not, if else, else what that means is. We do have this product does have values in it. That means that uh, that Redux Redux does have product uh, value available for this product here. In that case, what we're gonna do? Oh, well, actually, let me read this. Finish this off. So, so we said here, set condition and use effect to first check if products exist. If not, call get product action. That's what we did. Else else that means product exists in redux store so we can fill in component state for the product okay so that means that the product is already available to us in the redux state so let's just uh fill in um our component state right here fill in these props with the values from the redux store okay the way we're going to do that is so i'm going to do else uh, uh, we're going to use now these methods here for setting everything up so uh, i'm going to do first thing is so i'm going to do set product image to the product and then this was file name okay this is how it's called in the back end so uh, it, it was called file name okay so don't get confused i know it's over here it says product image but I, I i named this different in the back end okay when we created our model it's referred to as the file name okay so the next step is let me actually copy this here uh five more times two three okay just like that and then the second was product name set product name 
uh, set product name and then here product name and then the next one was product description okay so product product description and then the price and then category so price here and product price and here category product cat product product category and then last one was for the quantity so set product quantity and then product product quantity just like so all right so there you go that's it for that and uh, as another value here inside our dependencies array go ahead and add this product here all right so we should have dispatch product id and product if i save that let's see where we are at all right so second condition okay so we took care of this portion here so we have two more change condition and admin body component to first check if products exist before mapping otherwise error occurs okay so let me see what we get so far here um i'm going to go to the dashboard okay all right so you see, so here we are at the dashboard if i click on this edit for the turkey burger okay good okay all right, so that didn't have an error. But um, what I meant on that next step is that if um, right now we don't see anything here, but just know that so far we're doing good. But if we click on this back button, we should get an error. Okay, you might see an error like this. And the reason why this is occurring is because here um, in the admin body, actually, it might say here, um, does it, if I open up my console here. Let's see here. Uh, okay, so it's telling me here inside the admin body component at line 12. Okay, so the admin body component at line 12. So if I open that up here, the admin body component right here, line 12, this is, it's occurring in this area here. So it's referring to right here is that we're getting the error right here because we need to first check to see if products is exist first. So we're going to do condition to say products. If products, then products map. Okay. So this should resolve that issue there. I'm saving that and I'm going to go back and do this, repeat the same thing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, refresh this here. If I click on the turkey uh, turkey burger, the edit button, okay, and then I click on the back button again, there you go. The error goes away. So that's a little minor bug that you might encounter, and it's for that reason, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and mark that off, and we are off. We need one more step. So the next step is to test the output of any component state property in the rendered output. All right, now um, let's actually... So as it, let's go ahead and close this admin body component. We don't need that anymore. So as I said right now, you don't see anything here in the turkey burger. When you click the edit button, there's nothing still being displayed. So how do we know something actually changed or if we made some kind of um, uh, progress, right? Okay, so we're going to test this out because right now the use effect here, remember we set up this condition here that if there's if this product here this value here which we're trying to fetch from the redux state does not exist then immediately call the get product um, action function okay and at that point we should this this execution here should have uh make that request to the backend database and store a product inside the redux store Okay, so at that point, um, we should have, this should be filled in. So if it goes to the else block, that means 
um, that we do have the product available to us in the Redux store. So at that point, just set these component state properties with the value that uh, with the product value that exists in our Redux store, and that's what we're doing here. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and remove this here. So now we should have values our products stored here in these values so what i'm going to do is i'm going to test this out i'm just going to test just one value i'm going to test that a product name does exist um, the the prop there so i'm going to replace this inside admin product page with um right here with the product name okay inside a div tag in the rendered area if i save that this should be our final test here so if i go back Actually, yeah, so okay, so let's go ahead and test this turkey burger. If I click the edit button, look at that turkey burger. Let's go back. How about the veggie burger? It should say veggie burger, right? When we click uh, edit, there you go, veggie burger. Let's go back and pause the carbonara. If I click edit, pause the carbonara, and there you go. So that's uh, that's a, a big part of the uh, our editing or completing the edit page for our product, okay? So I will see you in the next lecture.